Astronomy is 400 years old. It started with Galileo. And it's based on the fact that uh, everything we see in the sky with our eyes and with instruments is uh, the particle that comes is called a photon. And multi-messenger astronomy is, the, and photons are made by a particular kind of physics process, which is electric, same that makes electricity and magnetism. But uh, there's other features of nature like gravity and, and uh, nuclear reactions that are the physics of whatever happens in the universe. So to do astronomy completely, you want to see not just photons, which is the signal that comes from electricity and magnetism, but the signals that come from nuclear reactions and the signals that come from gravity. If you put it all together, then you can understand whatever you're looking at in the universe. That's called multi-messenger astronomy. It's just barely beginning. So now the next feature to really understand is to use nuclear physics and uh, gravitation to give more features of what we're looking for. Uh, the example, uh, examples are how does a star die or what happens when stars collide. Uh, these are features, things that happen in space, but we don't understand them very, much, very well. How did the universe begin? To understand all those, we need more tools. And those more tools, just like you have in anything, you want a toolbox that has different tools, is to have the ability to look at the same phenomenon, but look at it both in light in other electromagnetic radiation, like radio waves maybe, or uh, high frequency gamma rays. And, uh, but now, to use different probes that you see something that comes from the nuclear reactions, maybe neutrinos, or something that comes from the fact that gravity is involved. That's gravitational waves. And we're just on the birth of starting to do that. We now know the answer to a puzzle that's been there for a long, long time. One that we can all relate to, and that is that uh, uh, we like to wear jewelry. And this jewelry is gold or platinum. But did you realize that we didn't have no way to explain how in the earth the gold and platinum got there? That every explanation we have of how the earth formed would have elements that got up as heavy as iron, but not heavier ones like gold and platinum. We didn't have a mechanism to do that. The very first observation of a collision of two neutron stars has at least probably given us the evidence that in earlier times, we had collisions of neutron stars that made gold and platinum. And then when the Earth was formed, they came into the Earth. There are very, very good scientists here, uh, theore theoretical scientists who have understood the theory of elementary particles, a very strong group that has worked at CERN, and people that do neutrinos, which is a subject that I've always done uh, for a long time. I think uh, uh, Spanish, uh, the Spanish country and the Spanish uh, science should be very proud of the group here in Valencia. Uh, it's a group I know well, I've worked with for many, many years, and uh, the students are very good. Uh, they're very interested in, in physics, and it's very uh, important, I think, and very good that this group is so well integrated internationally, working with uh, people from Europe at CERN, with Americans in America, with a colleague that was my student who's here now, who's Japanese, and so the international physics community has benefited by a close association with the university uh, physicists here at uh, Valencia. And I think the reverse also, that they've gained from all of us being part of the, of the group here. W w winning the Nobel Prize, of course, changes anyone's life. Uh, you're a celebrity and uh, uh, people think you're important. I'm no more important, but I, they think I'm important. But I think the biggest difference is, uh, for me as an American is that uh, my government in the, uh, America is made up almost entirely of businessmen and lawyers. And they make the decisions. 
and scientists don't have much influence on the government. So that uh, whether the problem is global warming, we have a government that can't understand it very well. So it becomes a question of which political party you're in, whether you think global warming is real or not real. It's a science question. And so it turns out that by having the celebrity, the prestige of being a Nobel Prize winner, the government listens to me or pays more attention. So I have a responsibility that I never had before to make sure that the, my interactions with the government are uh, important in making sure that I transmit to them what we know as scientists that they should understand because they're not scientists themselves. And to me, that's the most important difference. There's, of course, the differences of being more of a celebrity and more popular and invited more places. But the important difference is that uh, I uh, have more responsibility as a scientist in influencing government. In physics, uh, suffer because we don't have enough women in physics. We don't have enough uh, minority people, black people, and so forth in physics, which means of the most talented people that could do physics in the world, we're selecting a very small uh, part. So we need to include, be much more inclusive in how to bring uh, everyone into science. That has to start at a young age. So at a young age, two things are important. One is uh, to make sure that young people appreciate the beauty and the value and the uh, excitement of science. So scientific discoveries, scientific understanding needs to be brought to the youngest possible people so that they are interested in science, whether they do it or, or not, through their lives. And the second, and so that's very important educationally, uh, not just teaching people how to, young people, how to do math or something, but the excitement of science needs to be brought to young people so that they want to do science. And the second is to make sure that we <clears throat> are able to teach science, whether it's physics or astronomy or anything else, to the world and not just the elite people in very advanced societies. And I think the most important way to do that is to bring the excitement of science and not just learning about science. So that's, I think, the key.